Uh, hey everyone, so in this video we will be covering on a problem from CSU's problem set. Uh, so the problem name is dice combination. And uh, what you are given in the problem is, you will be given a number n. And uh, you have to throw a dice. And you can throw the dice any number of times. And you have to tell the number of different ways you can get the sum equal to n. Uh, so for example, if you, you, you want to have a sum of n equal to 3, then there are four different ways you can get that 3. You can get a uh, 1, 1, 1 in three different rounds of throwing dice, or you can get uh, 1 in the first round and 2 in the second round. Or opposite of that, you can get a 2 in the first round and 1 in the second round. Uh, do note that these two will count as separate because the order is mattering here so um, they will be counted separately and the last one would be uh, you get a three in the very first turn uh, so these are four different ways we can get sum equal to three now what we have to do in the doing this question is we're given an n and that n is up to one million and we have to print a number of ways that sum can be formed and uh, they are also saying that you will have to print answer modulo uh, 10 power 9 plus 7. So you can expect the answer to be really large. Um, right, so how do you approach this problem? Uh, it's a very standard problem. So most of you would have already um, solved this problem or you know heard about this problem. So the way you approach this is, um, you can def you can have a recursive method, and that recursive method uh, will give you, let's say I have a recursive method go, and uh, it takes a parameter, let's say sum, then this uh, method is going to return me, uh, it's going to return me the number of, uh, number of phase I can form uh, some using any number of dice any number of dice right so for example or let's just call it dp for simplicity i mean you can just simply call it um dp in our case right so if we think about this then dp of one uh is nothing but in how many ways can i get sum equal to one uh, by throwing any number of dice. So there's only one possibility to get this, right? You throw it in the very first chance and that is one. So there's only one chance. What, what if you want to get a sum equal to two? In that case, you can have two different possibilities. You either get one, one and one. This one you get in the first turn, this one in the second turn. Or uh, you get a two in the very first turn itself. So there are two different ways. DP of three is explained in the test case. Uh, which is nothing but you get one 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 or you get one two, you get a two one, or uh, you get a three in the very first one itself. So these are four different ways. So this is how we are defining our DP. So DP would be so our final answer would be DP of n because n is the input to us. This is our final answer, right? Now, how do I calculate a specific uh, DP state? I mean, how is it? depending on uh, some previous state which are already computed that we'll see now um, so before uh, we go to the approach just ha have a quick look at the constraints uh, since we're given it uh, we are given the maximum value of n is 1 million uh, this definitely gives us an idea that it's definitely not an o of n square approach right so we'll have some either linear or some n log n approach but definitely not a n square approach now um, so the trick here you can use is uh, so if I simply um, remove this part okay now um, your DP if you think about this your DP of I would depend on it would depend on last six states 
um, last six states, and those are like you'll have i i sorry i minus one, i minus two, and so on. I still i minus six. This v of i depends on these six states. How? So let's say if I want to form some seventeen, right? If I want to form some seventeen, then uh, how do I do that? Uh, I can do that from sixteen, right? I can uh, throw a dice and get a one. So that will become uh, 17. I can also do that from 15 by getting a 2 on the throw, right? On that single throw. I'm talking about one throw here. I'm not talking about multiple throws. So in one single throw, uh, from what all values I can come to 17? I can come from 14, even 13, 12, even 11 works, right? Uh, but does 10 work? No, it doesn't work because you'll need a 7 and a dice cannot give you a seven in one single turn. So if you think about this, these last six states, um, you can come to 17 from last six states, right? So if you think about this, you can simply say your DP of I, uh, it's the number of ways, right? So you can come from here or here or here. So it should be some of all these, right? Some of all the all these DP of I minus, uh, some j, where j, you know, is belonging from 1 to 6. If you think about this, so this is, uh, if you think about dp of 16, that would be number of ways you can get some 16, right? Uh, this is same for 15, 14, 13, and so on. Um, so if you sum all these six values, you'll get total number of ways you can get here, because uh, from each of these states, you can just, uh, you know, in one move, reach here. Um, so you, if you sum all these, you'll get your final answer. So this is nothing but the uh, final recurrence we'll be using. Um, so, so this is a very simple problem, but if you're doing, or if you are just, uh, you know, seeing it for the very first time, um, I would want you to now try to write the code for this. Uh, you can just pause here uh, and uh, try it once. Um, so now moving to the code part. So now you can do this problem in two different ways. You can write a recursive method or you can write a, write a iterative method. Uh, for this specific problem, iterative method is very straightforward. It's uh, like a couple of lines. It's very small, the mean logic. Um, We'll also see that, but uh, I'll be firstly writing the recursive approach uh, because throughout this whole series, I'll be mostly focusing on the top-down approach, the recursive approach. Right, so moving to the code part, um, we'll take an input number that is n. And now, since I'm doing a top-down approach, the recursive approach, uh, let's define my dp here and uh, this n is a constant which is the maximum size of dp and since now i have a dp i'll have to set it to minus one right now can i set it to minus one that's a question because minus one um uh, by minus one i mean to say that uh, this state is not visited but in some problems your dp value can itself be minus one negative in those questions, we cannot use a minus one value. You'll have to figure out some other way. You'll have to keep some time of visited array or a map, something like that. But in our case, what is the DP of, uh, what is the definition of this DP? It's actually number of ways um, to form some equal I. Uh, yeah. Uh, DP of I is equal to this. This is what DP of I is. And number of ways can never be negative. So we can represent a, a non visited state by minus one. Right? So in our case, it's totally fine. Uh, let's write a rec recursive method here. So let's call it, um, let's call it total. Okay. So we say that if total required is equal to zero. So if this required is zero, then in that case, we can simply say, uh, there are there's one way right what is that one way that you don't you don't uh, roll the dice you don't have to do it that is that is the one way but 
other base case would be when this uh, total is negative. When this total is negative, in that case, uh, what do you want to return? Um, we should return, since number of ways can never be negative, we should return a very high cost because uh, we want to minimize the cost, right? Uh, not minimize, so we want to find out uh, the number of ways. So we can, we can even return a minus one here. That's okay. Uh, because this minus one will be an identifier that uh, we have, uh, you know, somewhere went beyond the range. Now, um, other thing would be like, you'll have to test uh, your, this thing is, this is already computed. This state is already computed. You simply return from there. Right? And you don't uh, load further. Otherwise, if it is not computed, in that case, uh, uh, how do you do it? In that case, uh, you'll have these six options, right? You can come from the last six states. So before doing that, you'll set your current uh, DP to zero, right? Current number of bases is zero. And, and then what you do is you add your, uh, then you call the recursive method for every uh, state, every state which the last six states are need, right? And finally, uh, you return this DP of total. And uh, my base case would be, uh, you call, not the base case, my uh, my final answer would be, you call it for uh, N. That is, get me the answer for uh, number of ways of DP of N. So, um, let's try to run this. See if we have any issue. Okay, it runs. So, if we give input 3, this is a sample. I'm getting a negative here. So, um, you've done something wrong here. Okay. Um, so, if it is returning a negative, um, then what should we do? Uh, let's do one thing. Let's take this in a variable. Um, and let's call it the result. So, we say if result is not equal to minus 1, it means that uh, state is possible. It's possible. In that case, you only add it. Um, you add. Uh, in that case, you add your result, right? And uh, uh, what was the case when uh, all these calls didn't happen? Uh, can I get a minus one in this question, the final answer? No, I shouldn't, right? Okay. Yeah, so this should handle it. Only this condition is required. So if you run this code, you can put three, I get a four, which is correct. Uh, but still you're missing something. Um, that's the modular part. Right, so how do we do it? Uh, so every time we are adding something, uh, after just adding one state, so we'll just simply do a modulo. And also note that I'm using a long long uh, for integer, right? So my DP is actually a long long instead of int. That's why usually I don't worry about um, overflows. Usually this turns out to be good in a contest. So if we run it now, three is working fine, but what about a large number? Something 100. We still get some smaller number. Should be okay. Let's try to submit this. Um, okay, this works. Uh, so this was the recursive approach. Yeah, I know it's it's slightly lengthy, but. Uh, I did this recursive approach so that, uh, you know, you stay in, because the rest of the videos I'll be putting on uh, will mostly follow the recursive approach. Okay, so this was a recursive approach, but what if you want to do it iteratively? In that case, let's just get rid of this recursive method. And uh, you don't need to even specify this DP because we'll be filling the DP from the zero side, right? So initially db of zero is one because there is one way um, to get some zero that is you don't throw the dice at all 
then for every other state starting from 1 to n what you do is you loop over the last six uh, j less than equal to 6 j plus plus and you say if i minus j is greater than equal to j 0 it means the state is possible that like we are not going in the negative uh, you know just negative i if it is possible then we say dp of i plus equal to uh, dp of i minus j and you also do a modular here only uh, dp of i mod equals a modular and at the end since you're doing uh, it iteratively you'll have all the states from 1 to n you simply print dp of n Okay, let's just uh, run it again. For so three, it's giving me four. Uh, what about hundred? Okay, seems correct here. Yeah. We'll just make a quick submission to this. Uh, so this is the iterative way. It's it looks very short compared to the uh, recursive one, and it it will be faster than that because uh, there is no recursion overhead. Uh, but Throughout the series, I'll not be writing a lot of iterative code. So, um, yeah, that's why I went with the first approach. Um, so, yeah, that's it. So, uh, if you have any doubts regarding this problem, you can just put in the comment section. And um, if you like the video, do subscribe to the channel so that you get notified to further videos I'll be putting on the channel. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.